right? So for the one on the right here, we need to, again, find the parent chain, making sure we include the multiple bond. Um, so in this case, we're going to start closer to the multiple bond and draw it this way. So you have a CH3, the carbon-carbon triple bond, and a CH. And then the question is, is do we go up to that CH2, CH3, or do we go to the left to CH2, CH3? And since they're both the same thing, they're both an extra CH2, CH3, it doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to keep going around this way. Um, so now we can go ahead and number our carbons. So carbon one, two, three, four, five, and six, All right? So that's our six carbons. Um, if I had numbered them from left to right, the multiple bond would have a much higher number. Um, it would be carbon four if we went the other direction, All right? So if I were to go the other direction, it would be one, two, three, four, five, six. So we don't want that. We'd much rather use number two as opposed to number four for naming our um, multiple bond. So a six carbon chain is going to be hexane, but because we have a triple bond, we have to have a suffix that matches. So for an alkyne, it's going to be Y-N-E. Y-N-E, hexane. So again, whenever you have that suffix, it has the Y and E. Now we need to indicate where that triple bond is. So it's going to be on carbon number two. So it's two hexane. And then we still have to take care of the stuff we haven't talked about yet, which would be this group that is not part of the parent chain. In this case, it's going to be an ethyl group. Right? And the ethyl is going to be attached. Remember, we are using the, the red numbers at the bottom. So that ethyl group is attached to carbon 4. So we're going to call that 4 ethyl 2 hexine. Okay? So again, you find your parent chain. You have to include the multiple bond in that parent chain. And you're going to name and number your substituents, making sure that you give that multiple bond the lowest possible number. Okay, so here's a couple more examples. Um, so for this particular case, I wanted to include something that had a halogen, because we haven't done any naming with a halogen in there yet. So nothing really changes in terms of what we're doing. We still need to find the longest parent chain that includes the, the multiple bond. And this time the halogen, in this case, that chlorine that's in green is going to be one of the substituents. So again, finding the longest parent chain, we're gonna start over there. And we come here and we can include one of those CH3s. It doesn't matter again if we draw that up or down. And then we're going to go ahead and number the carbons. Uh, we want a number giving the multiple bond the lowest possible number. So hopefully it's obvious here that we need to start on the right. Two, three, four, and five. So we have five different carbons. So in this case, it's going to be pentene, right? So pen, pentene, again, in because we have a double bond. And then we have to say where that double bond is. Well, it's, it attaches carbons one to carbon two. So we're going to give it a lower number. So one pentene. And now we have a couple substituents to deal with. We have a CH3 up there, and we have a Cl down there. The CH3 we know is a methyl group. The chlorine we call a chloro group. So for halogens, if they are a substituent, you basically have the ending B O. So chloro instead of chloride, you drop the I D E and you make it an O. So it would be fluoro, chloro, bromo, iodo, so on and so forth in terms of naming that substituent, okay? So in this case, we have two substituents. We have a chloro and a methyl. So as we have before, we're going to do the substituents in alphabetical order. So the chlorine comes first, so it's going to be three chloro, 
and then four methyl one pentene. So three chloro four methyl one pentene would be the name of that particular structure. Okay, so this one is one that you'll see quite a few examples like in your book. And these ones are notoriously difficult to name for students. And the reason is, is because of the way the structure is written. And the key here are these parentheses. They give people a very hard time. So here's my trick whenever you have parentheses. Redraw the structure, getting rid of the parentheses. So we need to redraw without the parentheses, okay? So we're gonna take this structure and we're gonna redraw it before we try to name it. And whenever you redraw without the parentheses, don't start drawing inside the parentheses. What those parentheses mean is you have two identical CH, two CH3 groups, you have two identical groups attached to this particular carbon. Right, so it's saying there's two identical groups attached to that carbon. So to start with that particular carbon, we're going to write as a C. And then we're going to say attached to that carbon are two identical CH3, CH2, and then CH3, CH2. And then after that, we can kind of just write the rest of the structure as is. We had a carbon. H, C, H, 2, C, H, 2, C, H, 3. Now that we have the structure redrawn without the parentheses, it becomes a lot easier to name by doing the same method we have before, which is going to be to circle our parent chain and then follow those rules where we name and number all the substituents, including the multiple bonds. So in our case here, we're going to um, circle the parent chain. So the parent chain is going to be this one. So remember, in this case, in theory, I could have gone, go to a different color here, I could have started here and went this way, in blue, up to there. And that would have given me a one, two, three, four, five carbon chain. However, by doing that, one, it's not as long as the other one, but more importantly, it doesn't include the multiple bond, right? So remember, those are the two things. We want the longest possible parent chain, but we have to include the multiple bond. So let's get rid of the, the blue that I just put in there as best I can. Okay. Um, so kind of clean this up here again. Okay, so now we have our parent chain and we need to count how many carbons are in there. So we have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven carbons and our double bond is gonna be between carbons three and four. If we were to have numbered it going a different direction, right, we could have one, two, three, four, five. So the double bonds would be between carbons four and five. So we want to use number three instead of four. So again, we're not going to use the orange numbers. Get rid of those. All right, so now we know we have a seven carbon alkene, which is going to be called hep -teen. Again, because the ending is E-N-E, -E, that indicates a double bond, and we have to say where that double bond is. My five didn't go away there. All right, so we have to say where that double bond is. The double bond is between carbons three and four, so we use three heptene. And then we have to still go back and add our substituent, which in this case is going to be an ethyl group. And that ethyl group is also going to be attached to carbon three. So it's going to be three ethyl, three heptene. And that would be the answer for that one. So again, big key there is being able to redraw without the parentheses, and then you can follow the, the typical rules. 
right? So in this example here, we're going to actually um, draw the structure based on the name. So 5-ethyl-2-methyl-2-heptene. Um, so again, whenever we have names we're drawing the structure, you always work backwards. So we're going to start with heptene. So heptene is going to be seven carbons. Right, so right there we have a skeletal structure with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven carbons. Heptene, right, that tells us there's a double bond. This number tells us the double bond goes from carbon two to carbon three. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, write the numbers on here now. So let's go carbon one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So now the double bond from two heptene goes from carbons two to carbon three. Right, just like that. So now we have the two heptene parts, so now we need a methyl on carbon two. So same carbon, now we're gonna draw a methyl up here. We could leave it as just the line like that as a skeletal structure. I'm just gonna go ahead and write the CH3 just so you guys are aware, right, that that's the separate methyl that we added just so you can see the methyl in that way as well. And then on carbon five, we need an ethyl group. So that would be a CH2, then a CH3, which would look like that. Or again, we could write CH2, CH3. Um, both of them kind of work the same way. All right, so that would be 5-ethyl, 2-methyl, two 2-heptene. Two now for the last one on there, three hexine. So again, hexine means you have one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. Three hexine means from carbons three to four, we're gonna have a triple bond, like so. And now, let me go ahead and write the numbers of our carbons there. We have one carbon, two, carbon three, carbon four, carbon five, and carbon six. We also need to now go back and do two 5-dimethyl, so we're going to have a methyl on carbon 2 and a methyl on carbon 5. And those would be the last two, um, two pieces we need. And that would be how you do the two 5-dimethyl, three hexine. Again, on those two um, sub methyl substituents we added, as it's drawn right now, that's the skeletal structure. We could also draw it with specific CH3s on there, or CH3 like that on there. Both of those are correct, all right? And then the last um, example here is one of those, why is the name wrong? So three butyl, one butyne. So again, just to practice doing this, um, so that name is not going to be right, but we need to draw it like it sounds first. So we're going to start backwards. So one butyne would mean we have a four carbon chain with a triple bond on carbon one, right? That takes care of the one butyne part. And now we need a three butyl. So a butyl group would be a four carbon substituent that comes off of carbon three. So that's a one, that's a two, three, four, all right? So now we kind of pretend that doesn't even exist there because now we have the structure written and we just need to rename it. Now if we're gonna rename the structure that we have drawn, we're first gonna go through and find the longest parent chain. And what we'll see is that in this case, the parent chain is gonna go like that, all right? So this is gonna be carbon one, that's gonna be carbon two, that's going to be, whoops, not where I meant to, not where I meant to draw that three. Three, and then four, and then five, and then six, and then seven. So we're gonna have a seven carbon parent chain. So now we're gonna have heptine, so that's seven carbons. We're gonna have our triple bond at carbon one, so one heptine, and then we have a substituent there off carbon three. This would be a methyl group because it's only one carbon long. So then you would have three methyl one heptine, and that would be the correct answer. So the reason the name is wrong is it's the wrong parent chain, and what it should be is three methyl, 
one at a time.